Good morning, church. Welcome to worship today. We're glad that you're here. Uh, Teresa and I are trying to hold down the fort uh, in Susan's absence today. Pastor Susan is out on a cruise. It's, it's a tough life. Uh, so we're trying to um, maintain some sort of order, and if it looks like we're confused, that's exactly right. <laughs> so uh, give us, cut us some slack, and um, I'm sure we'll manage to uh, have a meaningful worship experience together. We want to welcome all of you. Uh, let's acknowledge the people that are here in the sanctuary together by waving at folks. And then we've got people joining hybrid. So let's welcome them as well. Uh, we do have, uh, if you're visiting today, we've got welcome bags uh, and we can distribute those. So if you're comfortable raising your hand um, to receive one of those gifts. I've been in that position before where I was visiting this congregation and um, now I'm a member, I joined in during Advent, and I have my very own name tag right here. So it's one of the uh, perks of becoming a member of the church, you get a fancy name tag to go with it. This is Ramadan. Uh, as we celebrate uh, Lent in preparation for Easter, a period of fasting and prayer, our Muslim brothers and sisters are uh, joining together uh, for Ramadan, a period of fasting and prayer and almsgiving. We have a lot to learn from each other, so we recognize uh, them as well. Today is Communion Sunday, so if you're at home watching uh, from your home, we invite you to prepare elements if you want to participate in uh, the communion time together. And uh, I think Gil has an uh, announcement about Rainbow Festival. Is Gil here? Okay, don't see him. And we have an announcement about uh, Good Taste Art Show. So that's coming up uh, April 9th at 7. It's $10, and Chris Crockett is gathering artists and poets and musicians uh, together for that evening. Come with your mask and a va vaccine card. So in 2014, my wife and I did the Camino de Santiago in Spain. So we walked 600 miles together to um, St. James Church in uh, Compostelo. And this is one of the symbols of walking the Camino. So it's a scallop shell, and it's got all these different... Um, veins to it to symbolize the fact that there's not just one way to make it to uh, Santiago. There are a number of different ways. There's the um, Del Norte, a northern route. There's the Frances, which is one of the main routes. There's a Camino um, Portuguese that goes up through Port Portugal. So there's a vari variety of ways to make it to Santiago. And I think about that in terms of how we come here together today. We are people from different races and different ethnic backgrounds. We are men, we were, are women, we are non-binary. We are people from uh, long-term Christian faith or new or people who are struggling with hurt from uh, what the church has done to us in the past. We come from a variety of different pathways, but here we are together. Wherever you come from, whatever your um, path has been, you're welcome here, and here we are together. Let us worship. So this is a liturgical experiment. While the cat's away, <laughs> so we usually ring the uh, triune bell, but let's be honest, 
the fact is, with so much going on in the last two and a half years, sometimes it's hard in our lives to hear that sweet tune of the bell, that still, small voice. So um, we will give that liturgical expression today by um, when we ring the bell three times at the first time, uh, we probably won't be able to hear it at all because the uh, musicians will be joining together in some kind of cacophony of sound. And there are percussion instruments at the end of many of the pews, so you can use those to make noise. You can beat your chest. <laughs> you can say, like we've heard so many times in the last uh, two and a half, three years, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. You can call out, help me. You can do anything to make uh, a confusion of sound that essentially drowns out the sound of the bell. And, uh, and then we'll have a centering prayer. We'll be quiet together. And then we'll uh, ring the bell again three times. Only this time, I'll invite you to hum in tune with the uh, sound of the bell, and the musicians can play something melodious rather than cacophonous as we uh, center ourselves for prayer. So are you ready? Now is the time for cacophony and chaos. Help me! Help! Help me! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Incoming! God, our world is discordant with hatred and violence. Disharmony pits party against party, country against country, neighbor against neighbor. Even our own hearts are filled with a cacophony, a clashing of competing interests. The good we would do, we do not. The evil we would not do, that we do. Tune our hearts, O oh God, and minds today to the sound of your love and justice. Harmonize our voices, our wills, our desires to the music of the spheres, to the melody of your grace, to the sweet sound of your mercy and compassion. Tune us, Holy Spirit. Tune us to your courageous, life-giving love. Let's stand together as we sing our centering song, Hearts Wide Open.
join me in the call to community. May we find courage here, courage to follow our call, courage to live out our faith. May we find hope here, hope that refuses to let us go. May we find truth here, May we find all that we seek. be seated. What a different world it would be if uh, all institutions could take time to confess that we are not complete in and of ourselves, that we need each other, that we need the wider natural world, that we need a power greater than ourselves, that we are imperfect in and of ourselves and we need one another. Let us acknowledge our humanness together. Jesus of Nazareth, we admit that often we tuck our faith into our pockets, hiding in a place of comfort rather than proudly declaring, yes, we are Christian, yes, we believe, yes, this faith has changed me. We are so afraid of offending others or embarrassing ourselves that we have established rule. No faith at the dinner table, no faith in politics, no faith with strangers. Forgive us for whispering when we could be singing. Forgive us for staying quiet when we could be part of rewriting the narrative. We want to be brave. We want to pour out perfume over your feet. These things we pray, amen. Family of faith, hear the good news. Even in our silence, God loves us. Even in our fear or shame, God has chosen us. Even when we sin, God wraps us in grace. We are free to be bold, to be brazen, to be exactly who God calls us to be. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Good morning. Our sacred reading today comes from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with them. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Hello, everyone. 大家好。约翰福音第十二章第一节到第八节。约翰福音第十二章第一节到第八节。有人在那里为耶稣预备了筵席马大在那里伺候拉萨路也和一些人与耶稣一同吃饭玛利亚拿了半公斤珍贵纯正的拿达香膏抹耶稣的脚又用自己的头发去擦乌里就满了香膏的
If Jesus had called your dead brother out of the cave where he was buried and now was alive, you might want to throw a dinner party too, right? <laughs> Lazarus's resurrection was a great celebration for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, and Jesus. But it became an act that sealed Jesus' fate. He was now a bona fide threat. So this feast, though sumptuous, and I'm sure Martha was a very good cook, it also had the cloud of death around it. Lazarus had been dead, and Jesus was talking about his impending death. Then Mary brings out the nard, perfume used for anointing the dead. It costs enough to feed a family, support a family for a year. And she pours it over Jesus' feet. Well, this is just too much for Judas. And while the story in the Gospel of John tells us Judas wasn't really concerned about giving the money to the poor, the Gospel of Mark doesn't mention that piece. Doesn't mention that Judas wanted to steal the money. So, did he? Might he really have been concerned about Mary slathering Jesus' feet with something that could have helped people for more than a year? Jesus, who cared so, far, so much about the poor. Is it really far-fetched to believe that that issue might have come up among a group of men who followed Jesus around and knew of his compassion for people who had nothing? Extravagance versus economic justice. We ridicule rich people and their toys when there's a world of hunger out there. Why hurl rockets into outer space when that amount of money could do so much good here on Earth? These are familiar arguments. It is so easy to make the case that Judas made in that story. And yet, there's a brazen beauty and soulful graciousness in many acts of extravagance. When I was a child, and I was a serious child, my grandpa Blythe had a fat, ornery chihuahua named Mitzi. She was his baby. He fed her too much. He fawned over her and let her do whatever she wanted. And I was incensed about this. Maybe I wanted some grandkid attention. But I developed a real attitude as a child toward people who treat their pets better than they treat poor people. But Grandpa Blythe was poor. Although we didn't know it at the time, he was slowly dying from the consequences of working in the Kentucky coal mines all his adult life. This little dog was a bit of joy in a very hard life. And now that I'm an adult who lives with three demanding cats, I know I didn't need to be a little Judas about Mitzi. <laughs> Several years ago, Southside Presbyterian Church in Tucson had outgrown its cinder block sanctuary and needed more space. Southside's history is that of being a mission church in which white settlers preached Christ to indigenous people of the southern Sonoran Desert. It has become truly a multi-ethnic church, and it is social justice incarnate. The sanctuary was just a small part of what Southside was. A conflict erupted over the same argument Judas made about the perfume. Why spend so much on a new sanctuary when we could spend that money serving poor people in our community? And it wasn't going to be just any old sanctuary. A group of people in the church raised money to build a worship center in the style of a kiva, a round house with flagstone flooring and hand-welded fixtures, a style that would be familiar to Native Americans. Still, it was a hard sell to the justice crowd. But fast forward to today, Southside's Kiva is one of the most beautiful worship spaces in Arizona and is one of the most utilized sacred spaces I've ever seen. 
Every day, Southside opens its doors for public gatherings, making the sanctuary accessible to all marginalized people it serves. The Kiva's very existence honors the people Southside seeks to serve, and it honors God. The desert fathers and mothers were the epitome of frugality and asceticism. They fasted to the point of hallucination, lived in caves, small huts, or simple monasteries. One desert mother, Mary of Egypt, wandered the desert naked and supposedly lived three years on one loaf of bread, although I'm a bit skeptical about that part of the story. <laughs> but Judas would approve. He would have approved. Yet when pilgrim visitors came, those in monasteries would cook them stew even during their Lenten mass fasts. Abba Moses was one who broke the rules constantly when it came to being hospitable. His superiors would see smoke coming out of his cell during Lenten fasts and they would go, oh, there goes Moses breaking the rules again. After some consideration though, they decided Abba Moses may have broken the commandment that people made up, but he was keeping God's commandment. Mary would understand. There is some of Mary and some of Judas in all of us, and how we use our material gifts is a matter of important discernment. We've read the gospel story of Mary and the expensive perfume but to really get a feel for it, I'd like us to spend a few minutes in a guided meditation taking you into the story. Sometimes when we imaginatively place ourselves in a story like this, we embody it and understand it a little bit differently. I invite you to be creative with this visualization. Uh, visualize the people in the story any way you like, any gender, any ethnicity, any dress, and place the story in any time era that you would like. We don't have to be bound by first century ancient Near East in our imagination. So close your eyes if it helps or not, it's your experience, but I invite you to relax and allow yourself to enter the world of your holy imagination. The scene is the Bethany home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, where Jesus is visiting. Take a moment to visualize each of these people. And you're there too, with the disciples for a dinner party. Look around at the disciples. Notice their mood and demeanor. This dinner is a celebration because not long ago, Lazarus was dead and buried in a cave. Jesus was called to the scene and overcome with grief, cried, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus did. You can tell Jesus is delighted to be at the home of these three people he loves so dearly and to be with you and the disciples. Look around, take, take in the scene, feel the mood of the room, and notice anything that seems to draw your attention. In a few days, it will be Passover. Jesus has been talking about how he's being watched by authorities and is about to be arrested. Notice what this kind of talk does to the people at the dinner table. It is a celebration, yet also a time of great uncertainty. During dinner, Mary brings to the table a lovely jar of perfume, a pound of it, a kind from the Himalayas worth an entire year's salary. 
Notice what the lavish jar looks like. Look at Mary and notice what stirs in you as she presents this expensive jar. Imagine possessing perfume worth your annual salary. How did she get it? What is she going to do with it? Then Mary crouches down on the floor and using her hair, puts this expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. Look at the crowd's reaction. Breathe in the aroma of this perfume. It's permeating the whole house. Gaze on the love Mary is showing to Jesus. Notice his response. Notice the others around the table, Martha, Lazarus, the disciples. Take in their looks, their gestures, their demeanor. The silence is broken by one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot. Watch as he stands up and says, why was this perfume not sold and given to the poor? It's worth a year's salary. How does everyone react to Judas's statement? How do you react? What does your intuition say to you about this outburst? Jesus says, leave Mary alone. She bought it to use at my burial. You will always have poor people with you, but you will not always have me. Let that scene play out from there. In your mind's eye, watch as the disciples react to Jesus' statement. Watch Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Does Mary seem to care about Judas' outburst? Notice your own reaction to what Judas had to say. Does he have a point? Do you sense he's honestly concerned or being contrary for some reason? As we begin to leave the scene of this dinner, go over to Mary and Jesus and pay your respects. And take your time. Speak to Jesus from your heart. Then walk out of the house and return to this place and this time. Amen.
you, Teresa. We come to this table. Uh, it's set, and uh, there is a welcome place for everyone here to come and join us. We have uh, two cups. Teresa will be in the front serving, and I'll be in the back with the bread and the cup. And Deb will be up front um, holding the uh, gluten-free uh, juice and the bread. And um, you are invited. Each and every one of us, with our doubts and our fears, our scars, our joy, our dreams, our hopes, our questions, we are invited to God's table. And here we will be met. Here we will be fed. Here we are given a taste of the expansive life that is full to the brim of love, overflowing with joy. So come, not because you must, but because you can. Come, you are invited, this table is for you. I invite you to remain seated as we uh, sing together the song of communion. Come to the table. Join the sinners, you've been 
table. I enjoy, uh, invite you to join with me as we bless these elements together. So if you could extend a hand, uh, whether you're here in person or uh, participating virtually as we bless these and ask God's blessing. Pour out your spirit on these gifts. May this bread and this cup be sustenance for our Lenten journey. By your grace, may we experience anew the call you place in our lives to serve one another. In feasting at your table, may our hearts be filled with courage once again to follow Christ. In collective longing for a taste of your kingdom, we join together in echoing the prayer of Jesus. Our parents who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We gather to remember how on the night when Jesus was arrested, he took the bread and gathered with his disciples, and he broke the bread and said, This is my body, broken for you, the bread of life for a hungry world. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and he blessed it and shared it, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, the cup of libation, liberation for all those who are thirsty. Come, for all things are ready. God, we recognize the way you still make yourself vulnerable to us today. In gratitude for the taste of your kingdom, may our discipleship shape us into fierce protectors of the vulnerable. Give us courage to practice our own vulnerability and help us to honor the sacredness of our need for one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Teresa will be up front, as, along with Deb, with the uh, gluten-free uh, option, and I'll be in the back. We invite you to take a piece of the bread, uh, break it off, and dip it in the cup, and participate in communion in that way.
now to come and light the candles as you wish for individual prayers that you may have. We um, have it arranged a little differently. There's two places here on the front and there's one in the back. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> come up front. <laughs> Let us pray.
Thank you, Jonathan and Ralph. There are varieties of ways that people in this congregation uh, anoint Jesus' feet with uh, nard, with uh, anoint them with oil, and show our gratitude. And uh, one of the ways is by um, giving our gifts, writing a check, uh, serving at the Welcome Center. Uh, this week, the um, uh, special offering go, that you can designate on your check goes to the Emergency Assistance Fund. So we invite you to uh, give your gifts today. This is the first time in two and a half years that we have uh, passed the plate. Uh, it's said that uh, God loves a joyful giver. So this is uh, one of the, I'm always looking for signs that we may be emerging from the pandemic and Maybe this is one of the signs from God that uh, that's the case. Let us worship God by giving our gifts. Gracious one, giver of every good and perfect gift, we give you thanks with our tithes and offerings, with our lives, with our service. Amen. I invite you to stand together if in body or spirit and uh, to sing our song of relief. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We got the salt of the earth. Call and let the people see. Love of God in you and me. We got the light of the world. Let the difference see. So go make a difference in the world. 
voice of peace So go make a difference in the world So go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world So go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world So let your love shine on Let it shine for all to see You may be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh, may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. And may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen. The worship has ended.